Eight minutes. How to master the A320 autopilot. Here we go, Captain. You are here in this tutorial series, and I hope everything goes well during your learning adventure. Today we will focus on this big panel, where you would find speed, heading, and altitude control over these three buttons. Each button have two functionalities. You can either push them or pull them. Push is for managed, meaning the autopilot will follow what the onboard computer calculated, and pull is for selected, meaning the autopilot will follow what you, as a pilot, instruct it to do so. In order to interact properly with these buttons, we need to change a setting in MSFS. Press Escape, then the Option wheel, go to General Tab, Flight Interface, and select Legacy in the Flight Interaction section. Now the cursor has changed, and you would see a up arrow for push and a down arrow for pull. You can interact properly with the autopilot button. Let's take off and see you in the air. The plane is currently flying without autopilot on. Let's begin by setting up the auto throttle so that we won't have to care about our engine thrust. First press the ATHR button, then verify that your thrust lever is in the climb position. If it's not in the climb position, you would see a lever climb indication on the PFD, instructing you to do so. Let's put it back to climb power, the warning message is gone, and we can see a speed indication on the FMA, validating the plane handle the power. Great, auto throttle is set, but no instruction has been given to the airplane yet. Remember each button has two functionalities, let's first try to pull the button in order to be in selected mode. In this mode, you, the pilot, control the airspeed directly on the autopilot panel. Increase the airspeed using the mouse wheel and you would see the engine getting a bit more thrust, while the airspeed would increase. The yellow arrow tells us the speed is increasing, and the blue triangle is the value we set on the autopilot panel. We are currently at 260 knots, and the plane will accelerate until 270 knots. At 270 knots, the auto throttle will reduce power and maintain this speed as best as it can. Now let's see the managed functionalities. Let's get back to the autopilot panel, then push the speed button. You would see the airspeed selection changing to three dashed line, and that's normal because we do not control the speed anymore. The onboard computer is in charge of that. Back to the PFD, the blue rectangle became magenta, meaning the airspeed is now managed by the onboard computer. By default, the managed airspeed is doing a very good job. So if you don't know what airspeed to choose, just set it to managed, and let the onboard computer do it for you. And that's it for the speed management. Now let's learn how to give a heading to the aircraft. First, let's enable the autopilot by clicking the AP button on the center of the panel. Now let's move the heading selection to a heading of 130. You would see a little blue triangle on the navigation display moving to 130 degrees, and the plane now turns in that direction. As simple as it is, selected heading is not more complicated than that. Now let's say you want the autopilot to follow your flight plan, that's where managed functionality kicks in. To enabled managed mod, push the heading button and you would see a little dot next to the heading indication, as well as a nav in blue on the FMA. It means the autopilot is waiting for the plane to cross the dedicated flight path, and then will follow it. Two solutions are available to join the flight path. First you can set a direct to the next waypoint, and it will create a joining path that your autopilot will catch. Second solution is to manually steer the aircraft in selected mode until you reach the flight path. Let's do that and give our plane a converging heading to the flight path. We are now approaching the flight path. Managed heading is selected as shown by the dot on the autopilot panel and blue nav on the FMA. Joining the path, heading disappear, nav becomes the main instruction in green and the heading indication has been replaced by three dots, meaning the autopilot will get custom headings to follow the path until the end. That's it for heading control. Now let's see how to make this bird climb or descent. Climb functionalities are the same as descent functionalities, so let's focus on descent for this tutorial. We are on our arrival at Boston, and we can see a little broken down arrow on the navigation display. This is our top of descent, and we can also see it on the flight plan page. We first calculate our next target altitude, which is often the last waypoint of the standard arrival, in our case tail at 5,000 feet. We can then input this value on the autopilot setting. Please note that changing this value doesn't make the plane climb or descent. 
it will remain at its current altitude. That's normal, because we need to define in which way the plane will climb or descent. There are three different ways to do it, and we will see all three of them. The top of descent has been reached. Let's use the VS function, where you would define a vertical speed to the aircraft. Let's input 2500 feet per minute for this example, then pull the VS button. As you can see on the FMA, the autopilot targets 2500 feet per minute and will change its thrust settings to maintain the desired speed. This first mode is the only one where the vertical speed has priority over airspeed, so if you target 10,000 feet per minute, well, you might have a surprise with the airspeed. The second way to descent is open descent. You can activate it by pulling the altitude button. In this mode, the plane first set the engine to idle and then will pitch the aircraft to maintain a specific airspeed during the descent. In this mode, the priority is given to airspeed first, then rate of descent. This case example shows you that the plane is a bit too fast from its target airspeed. As you can see, the plane decided to take a small rate of descent, 800 feet per minute, while waiting to slow down. After the plane catches its target airspeed, then it starts to pitch down and will maintain that airspeed only pitching the aircraft as the thrust is still at idle. Please note something very important. During open descent, the autopilot doesn't care about altitude constraints along the way and will continue to descend until the instructed altitude is reached, which is 5,000 feet. If you want the autopilot to follow constraints, you need to use the third descent mode by pushing the altitude button. It's the descent mode, and as you can see, the 5,000 feet limit changed to 11,000 feet, which is the next waypoint constraint. In this mode, the plane will handle everything for you and try to manage airspeed and altitude constraints as best as it can. On the left, the airspeed indicator now has two magenta bars that represents the allowance autopilot sets for the airspeed management. On the right, you might see a green dot. That represents the calculated descent path, and as you can see, we are way above it, at least 1,400 feet above it. As you may have noticed, we are too fast and too high in the arrival. To add insult to injury, the next waypoint has a speed constraint of 250 knots, and the plane will start reducing speed at this little magenta point. At the end of the day, you can't defy physics law, but you can help the plane slowing down, deploying the speed brakes. For the purpose of this tutorial, we won't do it for now and see how the plane handles that situation. If you remember well, in descent and open descent mode, the airspeed is the priority over rate of descent. Approaching the magenta dot, the airspeed dropped 10 knots and the plane is pitching up a bit to reduce airspeed because it's priority. As a result, we won't comply with the altitude constraint at this waypoint, but we can see the descent path is closing in. This little zigzag arrow on the navigation display shows you the predicted moment the airplane will catch the descent path. Watch the little green dot on the altimeter getting slowly but surely in the middle. Good. We are now back on track with the descent path, and it should be a lot easier for the aircraft to follow constraints. And that's it for the autopilot functionalities on the A320 fly-by-wire. In the next video, we will see how to catch an ILS and auto land this beast. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Happy landings, Captain.